Devontae Adams' comments, you want to interpret them for me about not having – he doesn't want to have the time – he doesn't have the time uh, to I, – I, I'm paraphrasing here – let things marinate to get some wins. He wants it now. What what'd you make about all that as Josh McDaniels at one and two coming into this town to take on a hot Chargers team? What do you got for me on that? Well, Devontae Adams has won a lot of games going back to his days in Green Bay, and he signed up for something that's a little bit different right now when he went to Vegas. You know, and there was more than one reason. It wasn't just Derek Carr. Adams had built a house out there. He wanted to live in Las Vegas. He had dreamed about being a Raider. That's where he wanted to be. But then, you know, whatever it was, 15 games into last season, they punt on Derek Carr. They end up bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo. Adams caught a couple of touchdowns last week, so it's not as if he's not having productivity right now. But you can imagine the frustration when you're looking around and you are seeing, at least in terms of their frontline guys, we can talk about death, but their frontline guys, they got superstars. You have Josh Jacobs. For some reason, you can't run the football. You have a Devontae Adams. You're not passing it consistently. You got Max Crosby, who's doing his thing week in, week out, regardless of the circumstances. But he's not a one-man wrecking crew uh, in terms of being able to fix everything else with your defense here. So I didn't read much more into it than Devontae Adams didn't sign up to lose. He didn't think that he was going there, much less to play without Derek Carr, but he didn't think he was coming into a situation where there was a rebuild. He went there also in part, I believe, to show people that his career was not a product of Aaron Rodgers, and he wanted to prove I'm a Hall of Fame receiver regardless of who's throwing me the football. When you're losing games, even if you're having production, that can certainly raise some questions. I get the frustration. I don't see a whole lot more in it than that. I would say, you know, especially if the Chargers had lost last week, they had that thrilly win against Minnesota. But even now, you know, this is, you don't want to call it an elimination game in week four, but it kind of has that vibes of whoever wins this game is going to be feeling pretty good as they move forward here. Whoever loses this game, the Chargers have a week five bye, is going to be feeling like, okay, we are really looking upwards here at the rest of the eight. How about a hot seat game? Too early to start using those phrases or what, Tom? I think there would have been a lot of discussion about if the Chargers had lost last week. I don't think that that's necessarily realistic um, because they don't believe they've ever made a coaching change even in the season. Um, with the Raiders, yeah, I mean, there's there's frustration. You know, they were a playoff team in 2021. Josh came in. They started to make changes. It takes a while to enact that cultural shift. They went 7-10 and 10 last year, missed the playoffs, and now they're, I believe, 1-2 and two, uh, at this stage. So I think that the hot seat probably – the discussion certainly begins, especially when you've got these early season buys and teams naturally would be looking at those as, okay, is this the right time uh, for us to make a change here? There's certainly some assistant coaches who you would anticipate would be on the hot seat, depending how things play out here in the coming weeks. I would tell you this, Rich, I'm going to wake up starting Monday with every single Monday morning with my antenna up because, you know, this is where frustration boils over. This is where certain people go into CYA mode and just try to, you know, okay, you want to? You want some a warm body? We'll we'll give you the coordinator. We'll give you this position coach. We'll make this change. We'll make this trade. That's the reality of the NFL. Even though it's the longer season that's ever been at 17 games, even four games in, like I said at the start of this, you start to know: Are we in or are we out? And if you're out, that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 